On this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over freeze drying and curing cannabis buds, which is kind of a unique process um, that's kind of entering the cannabis world and uh, probably here to stay because it does produce a very interesting end product in a very short duration of time. So hopefully this video lecture will give you some insight into this unique method of drying and curing cannabis buds. All right, let's look at freeze drying and curing cannabis buds. So this is not a new method, so I don't want to think that this is completely new and never heard of it before, but the general concept has been around for many years and got its start in the food industry. It is gaining popularity with, it, with cannabis since it can shorten the curing process to less than two days. Some companies are even claiming 24 to 36 hour total curing process with no loss in quality, maybe even improved quality. This can also be done by um, home growers as well as large scale commercial operations. So it's not just limited to one particular grower. It can be applied uh, to both situations, but definitely important this reduced uh, curing time, much, much more advantageous in the large scale commercial operations that may have a lot of buds to go through. So hanging versus freeze drying. This is just kind of like a little quick little comparison kind of between the two. Typical hang dry, uh, you're looking at that 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit between 45 and 55% uh, percent humidity. Uh, too hot is not good. It can break down the terpenes. It does take time, can take upwards of three weeks uh, potentially. Uh, so again, those are the traditional hang to dry. Freeze drying says that it, of course, maintains its freshness, uh, really kind of like pauses the plant ideally in time. Uh, it's very fast. They can say about 24 hours. Uh, you can go through the entire process. And basically, freeze drying will preserve uh, and allows to maintain the terpene and, and cannabinoids because basically the enzymes are frozen in place. Nothing's going to go through the breakdown process. It's going to be literally, as the name implies, frozen in place. So again, this is a nice comparison between the two. Both can result in quality end products, but freeze drying does offer some intermediate uh, benefits there. Uh, simply, there's no heat needed. So with the absence of heat, with this curing process, the physical buds, cannabinoids, and terpenes can be better preserved since they're frozen in time in a short curing cycle. So you need to add any heat. They're literally frozen uh, in time. And it's a great way to preserve and maintain the original contents without risk of degradation. Now there's also reduced curing time, again, compared to the traditional hanging method. The reduced curing time not only makes the general process attractive to production growers, but there is the additional benefit of reducing the risk of mold or mildew developing within the process because you've taken that duration of time and you've really shortened it up. There's again, they're saying about 24 hours um, and it does take specialized equipment so nothing's you know, completely easy, uh, but once set up, this is a very attractive uh, curing process. So just the basics of it, well, the phase one, as the name would imply, would be deep freezing. It's a quick freezing process where the buds are exposed to negative four degrees Fahrenheit or even colder. The colder the temperatures may be harder to achieve, but are advantageous to ensure maximum freshness. However, colder is better to some extent. Once you get below minus 80 Fahrenheit, uh, really have diminishing benefits. If you can go lower than minus 80, you've got a really special uh, cryogenic freezer, but really, you don't really need to go much more than minus 80. Minus 40 to minus 80 is a good target range. Fahrenheit. The temperature should be maintained for at least 10 hours to help preserve the physical structure of the buds there. So again, a little uh, temperature and a little duration of time. Then we get to kind of the, kind of the um, stage of what's called sublimation. Now sublimation is the process of changing from a solid to a gas without passing through the intermediate liquid phase. So it's solid directly to gas would be sublimation. This does occur in nature when ice on snow from the Earth's surface changes to water vapor in the air without first melting into water. Kind of a unique concept, tends to occur a little bit more commonly in kind of the Midwestern part of the United States, going right from solid ice or snow directly to water vapor. The opposite of sublimation, the gas directly to a solid, is called deposition, and this is where water vapor changes directly uh, into ice, such as snowflakes, as well as frost. During the curing process with uh, cannabis, a vacuum pump is used to reduce the pressure, which changes the, the sublimation point. This is how we're able to achieve those um, points uh, by changing the pressure. It's a con and then there's controlled heat added to convert the frozen moisture directly into water vapor. Um, so it's a very controlled process. That's why we're using those kind of cryogenic freezer vesicles uh, to aid in this. 
then capturing that water vapor. So with controlled systems, the water vapor would be captured as ice to help ensure no terpenes are lost in the process. The terpenes will have to be used uh, as alternate products, not dry flour, such as vapes or oils. But there is a way to ensure there's no loss by uh, condensing down that water vapor. Uh, any terpenes that were caught in that water vapor can then be captured and used in other products so they're not being wasted as part of the process. And then lastly, that final dry. So uh, during the process, the temperature is raised to 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is when the water content is removed, and it offers the growers the ability to adjust the amount of final moisture content that remains. With controlled systems, this water content is under the grower's regulation, so they're allowed to go through and test and see. And here we're looking at an example of a dry trim here between 8 and 10 percent moisture, but whatever the grower desires, they can kind of dial that in during the final drying process. So again, this might be something a little bit more applicable to large-scale growers, but this cryogenic freezing uh, is being applied to cannabis more and more. So hopefully this gives you a little insight uh, into it if you want to consider it for your operation, or at least if you're aware of it, if you hear it mentioned.